Hey there, Locked On ACC listeners. I know that the 2023 NFL Draft just happened, but damn it, we're getting into the 2024 NFL Draft. We're going to talk all the players who are looking like they're going to be first-rounders in next year's draft out of ACC on today's episode of Locked On ACC. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, folks. First of all, happy Cinco de Mayo. Enjoy it. Live it up. Do all the things. Eat all the tacos. Drink all the tequila. Do so safely and responsibly. But now we are going to get into the realities of what we're looking at. Now, this is the most the most strenuous research I've ever done into an episode because to me, watching games, actually watching film and all that, regardless of sport, pretty much, I enjoy it. I enjoy watching people compete at a high level. That's what I enjoy. What I don't enjoy is looking through like, all right, let's see what this pundit has to say and this pundit has to say and this pundit has to say. However, in order to create today's episode, I looked through 10 different mock drafts of the 2024 first round, and I'm here to tell you about a list of guys that were listed as regulars in the first round and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to break it down by the uh, guys who were the top four who were listed in the most mock drafts as, as first rounders. And then I will get to the rest in, in the uh, second segment of the show here. But let's start here, okay? Of the 10 mock drafts that I looked at, there were only two players that were mocked as first rounders in every single one. That is North Carolina's Drake May. And that is Florida State's Jared Burks. Now, that makes sense, right? Because a lot of people, so I'm a Lions fan, right? I got my Lions hat with me right now. But anywho, I'm a huge Lions fan. And people talked about the Lions had a terrible draft in terms of the first round because of positional value. There is no greater positional value than quarterback and edge rusher. Those are the two most premium positions in the game. If you can find a great, a really good, really, not even great. If you can find a really good one of those, they that is rated above finding a great almost any other position. So that makes sense. But here's the very interesting thing about these two as well. Of all of the uh, drafts that they were mentioned in, they were mentioned in the top 10. They were mocked, rather, in the top 10. Uh, Drake Man, every single one of them. Jared Verse in nine. Now, that shouldn't be much of a surprise to anybody, right? Drake May, with all that he showed last year, I mean, in some years, he would definitely be the number one overall pick. But it just so happens to be that Caleb Williams is in the same draft as him. But I'm going to tell you something. When you look at Drake May, you've got to talk about a complete. And when I say complete, I very much so mean complete package. In terms of the ability to push the ball downfield, in terms of anticipation and accuracy underneath and being on time and on schedule. And I'm fairly certain he was one of, if not the leading rusher for North Carolina last year. So that's, it makes sense. It it shouldn't be much of a surprise with him um, throwing for 38 touchdowns against seven interceptions last year. Again, it, it just makes sense. It makes sense that he's talked about in this way, leading North Carolina to winning the coastal last year. And I, I was absolutely correct. He was the leading rusher last year with 698 rushing yards as well. Uh, So it makes sense that he's being mocked where he is because you would have to search for something that he can't do, that he can't do. And even if you were to find that, I mean, or actually, I don't think that you would find the thing that he can't do. I just think that there are things that he doesn't do at as high of a level, uh, potentially as a Caleb Williams. But with that being said, not a ton of things. But let's go over to the other side of the ball where we look at Jared Verse here. Jared Verse is 6'4", 250, long, athletic, bendy as he want to be. I I think that that's really underrated. For an edge rusher, the ability to bend and and get your body into good uh, positions or awkward positions and angles, but still maintain the, the strength and power and balance to still keep moving forward towards the quarterback, that's rare. But Jared Verse has it. And 
he doesn't lose momentum very often when working his moves, which is that's one of those things that separates good pass rushers from great. Like even when he's working his moves, his it, it almost seems like the speed at which he's rushing doesn't slow down. He throws his dent rip. He throws his uh, double hand swipe, whatever he's throwing. When he's throwing it, he's still just getting He's the, you don't see the the choppy, super choppy feet unless it's very uh, conscientious and unless it's very pivotal to the move that he's working. And he's better against the run than you would think. When he first came in, he was a little thin, a little wispy, but he's gotten better and better against the run. And he's a lot bigger, um, allegedly, this offseason than he was last year. So we'll see what he looks like there. But now there are two more players that were um, slotted to be first rounders in over half of these drafts. And one of them, you've heard the name before, if you're a football fan, Jeremiah, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. Man, I'll tell you what, when you watch that young man play, you it, it's, again, if you're a fan of football, especially the Philadelphia Eagles, you're going to say to yourself, Oh, you your daddy, son, because that young man can ball. He is instinctive. He is a big hitter. He is, I mean, in essence, pretty much all the things that his pops was. He's he's all those things. And I think the difference is he has a little bit better lateral movement. He is, um, you know, I know that the term sideline to sideline is a bit overused, but in that capacity, he's better than what his pops was. Very good dropping back as well um, and zone coverage and all that good stuff. He's he's pretty much everything that you want. He might be the ideal Mike linebacker in today's game. He's not as fast as, let's say, maybe a, a Devin White or a Devin Bush. But again, I think he has better or comparable instinct. I think he has better instincts than both of those guys, honestly. And so it, it makes sense why in a position that, again, doesn't have great positional value, you could see him uh, being mocked in so many of these drafts. Again, he was mocked in nine of the 10 drafts I looked at as a first rounder. And in two of those, he was looked at as a top 10 pick. And now the last player who was picked in over half with six of the drafts, he was mocked to go in the first round in offensive tackle out of Miami, Zion Nelson. Let me tell you something. When I talk about positional value and I say quarterback and edge rusher, those are the two really, really premium ones. Another premium one is left tackle. And Zion Johnson is, I'm sorry, Zion Nelson has been holding down that left tackle spot in Miami for quite some time. And he's been doing a, a darn good job at it. And so it's it's not too much of a surprise to see a guy who's getting better and better um, as the years go by, kind of looked at in his light, who came in as a, a fairly highly touted recruit as well. It's not really a surprise, right? And at the end of the day, when you look at teams and how they're constructed, nine times out of 10, if you have your franchise guy you need to get as, as far as a quarterback you need to get him some protection that's how great teams are built that's how dynasties are sustained that is how that works out that's just how that happens and so the pick of zion nelson for a team that's either young and looking to get better or for a team that has an older quarterback where it's like hey you can't be playing around taking a lot of hits with that guy Zion Nelson is definitely your guy. At least that's what the scouts think. Again, he's picked in over half of the uh, mock drafts that I looked at as a first rounder. So it definitely makes sense. And I'll tell you what, the best teams and the longest sustained franchises more often than not, yes, you need a great quarterback. You need great skill positions and all that good stuff. But they're more often than not built from the inside out. If you look at the 49ers and what they've done, they've been able to do it with Jimmy Garoppolo, a quarterback, with Trey Lance at quarterback, with Brock Purdy, Mr. Irrelevant at quarterback. Why? Because they build that team from the inside out. Who has a better offensive and defensive line? Who? That's how that works out, right? So Zion Nelson, a player like him, he's going to be special for somebody. He's going to anchor somebody's offensive line for the next 8 to 12 years, and they're going to be very happy with that pick when it comes because, again, great teams are built. From the inside out, there is no if, ands, or buts about it. That's the only, I'm not going to say that's the only way to do it, but that is the proven way to do it that we have seen as sure as the sun rises on the east and sets on the west. Great teams are built from the inside out. And speaking of built, I've got to talk to you all about Built Bar because if you're looking for a delicious snack, 
but don't want all the sugar and calories. And you, you want to get some protein in as well. Well, then you've got to try Built. If you're like me and you want to make healthier snack choices, but you don't want to compromise on taste, then Built Bar is just the thing for you. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so amazing. You won't think that they're good for you. You got to try this. And what makes Built Bar so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievably good flavors like churro, peanut butter, brownie, and cookies and cream. So make sure that you go online today. Go to built.com and get your uh, built bars or built bars puffs. And they're in both Walmart and Sam's Club now. So if you don't want to wait online, if you got a Walmart near you, you got a Sam's Club near you, go ahead and get yourself a four bar box from Walmart or a 13 bar box from Sam's Club. Either way, you can't go wrong. The more the merrier, but just make sure that you're married with some built bar. So the the other guys that I've got to talk about here who were also mentioned a significant amount of times, uh, and I'm going to get to the guys who were mentioned once um, at the end here, but there were a good amount of guys that were, you know, they, they didn't quite meet that level of over half, but they were very close in terms of how many um, times that they were they were mentioned in, in these mock drafts as first rounders or potential first rounders for next year. We ended last segment with Zion Nelson. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and keep the Miami train rolling because we got multiple Miami guys being picked four times with defensive tackle Leonard Taylor and safety Cam Kitchens. Those two are guys that are being looked at as first rounders. And let me tell you this, Leonard Taylor possesses a ton of pass rush juice on the inside. And I know you've heard me say that a lot. And, and you heard me say that uh, when we talked about this last drive and, and Cancy and all that good stuff. Cancy was the leading pass rusher in terms of pass rush win rate on the interior in the ACC. Do you know who, I'm sorry, in all of the power five, do you know who was second in all of the power five in terms of pass rush, pass rush win rate on the interior? None other than Mr. Leonard Taylor. He's the real deal. He's got the ability to be an absolute game record because if you line him up at a three technique and you you have uh, somebody else on the other side that can rush as well from the one technique or you put two, three techniques out there, you would get in the speed package and put an extra defensive in or whatever the case may be out there. It's hard because how do you double? Them? How do you do it? So now you've got him one-on-one with the guard or if, a, if you know a center can't block, you mess around and, and get cute with a blitz to pull a guard off him. Now you've got a one-on-one with a center who ain't great in pass protection. And he's going to, that's candy from a baby. That is every day and twice on Sunday. And he's going to need to get it twice on Sundays in order to make sure that he's uh, getting to a second contract in the NFL. But Leonard Taylor is definitely a guy to watch out for in this season coming up because again, he's powerful. He's strong. He's quick. He's a guy that has a lot of suddenness on the inside Leonard Taylor of Miami, he's a name to watch out for this season and in next season's draft. And Cam Kitchens, you talk about versatility. You talk about range. You talk about instinctiveness. You talk about ball skills. You talk about ain't afraid to lay some lumber. Cam Kitchens fits all of those requirements. I'm telling you right now, this is a situation where Miami and Mario Cristobal have got to be smiling their hearts out because If you send three guys to the NFL as first rounders next year, how much easier does it become to recruit guys in that South Florida area in the state of Miami, as Howard Snellenberger put it, right? How much easier does it become to win that constantly when you can say, well, how many did Florida put out? Well, how many did Florida state put out? And and of the guys uh, that Florida state put out, wasn't, wasn't the one guy from Florida State that they did put out? Wasn't he from Pennsylvania? Come on. Come on. Stay home. We take care of our Miami guys, and we make sure that they get on to the league after. That's that's at least the argument that could be made there. Uh, but, again, this is a, a thing where you're looking at um, all of these prospects that could potentially be coming out of Miami and saying to yourself, wow, this, this could be an absolutely – great year for that program in terms of not only how they perform during the season, but what happens next year when the draft rolls around and and the different places that these guys can go. 
And I know that some of y'all are thinking, well, you talked about Trotter, but that can't be all that Clemson has. That can't be the only guy that Clemson has that was talked about as a first rounder. And I'd say you're absolutely right. Safety, Andrew Makuba was talked about in four of the mock drafts as a first rounder as well. He's another one of those guys that he's done a little bit of everything. And he's a guy that when you look at how how maligned Clemson's secondary was last year, he was the bright spot. He was the guy that you looked at and said, you know, the corners are struggling a little bit, but he's a guy that when you throw at him, you're kind of asking for trouble because, I mean, Makuba was – he was no joke. He was no joke. He does what he's supposed to do. He's always where he's supposed to be, and he has an instinctive feel for where the ball is going as well. That is, it's it's a very it, – it serves him very well at the college level, and if he can translate it over to the NFL – or if he can translate it over for this next season as well, he'll be in here where these uh, four drafts have him going, and – one of my personal favorites is next. One of my personal favorites, one of the guys that I watch and I'm always in awe of because, I mean, it, he he always seems to be doing something amazing. Every time that ball is coming his way or it's in the air, he's always doing something amazing. The main man, Johnny Wilson. I mean, 6'7", 220, 230 pounds. The man can just go up and get it. He can flat do it. He And he won Florida State some games last year with just saying, hey, I'm taller than you. I'm better than you. What are we doing here? What are we doing? But anywho, Johnny Wilson was uh, mocked as a first rounder in three drafts, um, three of the 10 drafts that we talked about or that I looked at here. And he's a guy that he can run. He's tall. He high points the ball well. I don't think that you need too much more in the NFL. That's He has things that you objectively cannot coach. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can you can try and, and scheme and dream and plot and work your way through all these different things. And Oh, yeah, we're going to work it out this way. We're going to work it out that way. It doesn't matter how under God's green earth you plan on working it out. How are you going to outwork six of it? Hmm. Everybody says, well, you know, if they're taller than you, get the ball on the way down. How? Explain it to me like I'm a fifth grader. You throw up a jump ball to a guy that's 6'7". If he plucks it out the air, he can keep it in the air and away from you. So I not really too much of a surprise um, that he's he's picked there. And the next guy on this list may be a surprise to some people who aren't super deeply um, entrenched in ACC football, but Graham Barton out of Duke, right, a tackle that's said to have you know, too short of arms, and and he's talked about a lot like uh, Skronik was in this draft. And where does Skronik go? In the first round. Skronik out of Northwestern uh, in the first round. And I'll tell you this much. Graham Barton, it makes sense that he's a Duke guy. He's very cerebral. You can tell he thinks his way through the game at a high level. And he, he oftentimes is the guy to diagnose and call out at the line of scrimmage uh, some of the blitzes that are incoming and whatnot. And he moves very well. He moves for a guy his size. He moves very well. Again, I've talked about the the not having the longest arms, and that's why people are comparing him to Skronik. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you put Graham at guard or at tackle. I think that he's going to excel and he's going to be somebody's first round pick um, as well there. And the last guy that I want to talk about, the last guy who was picked in multiple uh, drafts as a first rounder is Mr. Barrett Carter out of uh, Clemson. He's another guy that I, when you turn on that tape in the Clemson defense where you're, this is the third guy that I've talked about being uh, drafted or mocked as a first rounder. Anytime you see somebody do something on that defense, that's like a, wait, what? Anytime you watch last year and you saw somebody do something that just had you like, in awe, just had you in shock and awe, chances are it was Barrett Carter. From leaping over uh, running backs that were trying to cut him on a blitz and redirecting so smoothly upon landing that it's it's literally like, how does one's body start and stop force change direction that quickly as a linebacker? As a linebacker. That's absolutely amazing. But even going beyond that, he's a guy – 
that I think the only thing that's holding him back is potentially the lack of size in terms of weight. I believe he weighs in at, at he comes in at 6'1, 225, which of course you're always going to have problems with offensive linemen um, with those measurements because you know you don't have the longest arms. And if you're not a true, like, I mean, just a thud machine to where anytime linemen come up and, and try to get their hands on you, you're under their chin right away, could, um, producing a ton of knockback. It's going to be a problem for you, but I'm going to tell you this. I have not seen a linebacker that is as good in man coverage as Barrett Carter. That is as good at carrying guys vertical up the seams as Barrett Carter and creating extremely tiny windows. When I say extremely tiny windows, I mean a lot of quarterback in the NFL, you already have to hit very narrow windows anyway. But when you have a linebacker like Barrett Carter who can run step for step with pretty much anybody who can mirror and match routes with almost anybody, you're looking at a very good weapon there because that, that means that his floor, his absolute floor is like a sub nickel package linebacker like that's, And he's going to do that at a high level for seven, eight, nine years. That's the absolute floor for this guy. I don't know. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. If you ask me a guy who can do that, and even potentially play a little bit of uh, a little bit of nickel if you're looking at a slot receiver that's a little bit bigger or somebody who likes to put their tight end in the slot. He's a guy that I'm I'm just saying it makes sense. It it, it completely and totally makes sense. So those are all the guys that were mocked in multiple 2024 first round mock drafts as first rounders. To close this thing out, I'm gonna go over the guys who were talked about uh, only in one mock draft apiece. And on that list of guys who are only talked about on one mock draft, we have a pretty eclectic and interesting group of names here. We have Christian Mahogany of uh, Boston College. We have James Williams. Uh, we have Will Shipley, obviously running back out of Clemson. And we have Javion Cohen, um, offensive guard out of Miami. Now, let me explain something to you very simply, okay? The reality of what we're looking at in terms of all these guys, I think all of them, for different reasons, are going to have to have big years, right? That's not a, a joke or exaggeration uh, because, I mean, the reality is a lot of these guys, if they don't have big years, they all have question marks that are lingering. That's just the reality of who they are or what they have going on, right? If you look at James Williams, you kind of say, well, his hips a little tight. He, he's safety out of Miami. He struggles with redirecting a little bit. He struggles with the ability, the natural ability to kind of feel his way through the game and just feel where the ball's going and, and all that good stuff. So you look at that with him and say, hmm, that could be a problem. Like, yes, length is always great. That's a, like I talked about with Johnny Wilson. You can't coach it. You can't put that in a guy. Six, five, six, four at a safety, great length. But at the end of the day, if you're not around the ball enough, why does it really matter? But if he has a great year, you could definitely see him go up in the first. Christian Mahogany, a guy that was phenomenal in the 2021 season, missed a lot of 2022 with an injury. Can he come back? And be in a can he come back and show, hey, I am not only a a good tackle still, I am not only a good lineman, still, I'm great at it. I can still go out there and dominate and wreck game plans in terms of if you run the ball behind me, we're good. Or wherever they if they put their bad best pass rusher over here, their baddest guy over here, don't worry about it. You ain't got to worry about this guy for the rest of the game. Can he show that he's still that recovering from injury? And speaking of recovering from injury, Will Shipley, he's a guy that tore his ACL. There's, there's that worry of like the durability and whatnot. But when he's on the field and when he's doing his thing, he's explosive. He's exciting. He looked good last year. But the question is, can he take it up to another level? Can he make this offense be fully prolific with him as the bell cop? That's, that's what the question is going to be. He's shown ability as a receiver. He's shown ability in the return game. He's shown ability as a runner. He's shown the ability. Can he stay healthy? And can he be the bell cow for a full uh, season? Javion Cohen, transfer, Alabama transfer into Miami. It's it, He's very interesting because this pick is 100% projection. 
This, and I don't mean pick as in like, oh, somebody's already picked him. I mean, in picking him as a guy that you believe will be drafted in the first round is 100% projection because he hadn't played much. He hadn't played much. And don't get me wrong, he's looked good when he's played sparingly, but he hasn't been a guy that you've consistently looked at and said, oh, man, we have a ton of game film on JV on. We know exactly who he is, who he ain't, what he could be, and what he can't. That's not true. So I, I think that all the guys that were mentioned once, you have some very big question marks there that they can answer and play themselves into the first round. And let me also tell you this. If you think that there were not enough players or if you think that your team has some players that are going to play themselves into the first round that I just don't know about, please tell me. Put their names down so I can see and I can watch them for next year and I can say, all right, let me watch what this guy's doing. Let me watch film of this team and see this guy and see how he in particular is playing to see that he'll be a first rounder next year. But this is just the the stuff that I've compiled from scouring through uh, these 10 mock drafts and, and all that good stuff. So, you know, it's way too early. Of course, guys are going to rise. Guys are going to fall. People are going to get healthy. People are going to get hurt. People are going to play out of their minds. People are going to underachieve. It's going to happen. It happens every year. But this is your 2024 way too early. Again, this is a combination of 10 different drafts and all the information we got there. Of course, Drake May and Jared Verse are headlining. Drake May was picked on average between three and eight. The lowest he was picked was eight. Highest he was picked was three. Um, Jared Verse, on the other hand, I want to say between three and I want to say he was picked 12th in the one that he was outside the top 10, 12th or 18th, one of those two. But long story short, these all these guys are phenomenal. Jeremiah Trotter Jr. as well, again, linebacker that just – he just seems to know what offenses want to do before they want to do it. All of these guys are phenomenal. There's many things to talk about for each and every one of them. And I'll tell you this much. Yes, I expressed some concerns about some players. You don't go in the first round if you're not a phenomenal player. Objectively speaking, when you get to the college level, from high school to college, they ask, what can you do? If you can do something at a high level, you can get a Division I scholarship. You can get an FBS scholarship. You can get a Power Five scholarship. You can get a scholarship in the ACC. If you can do something at a high level, when you get to the NFL, they're asking, what can't you do? What is there or are there multiple things that you do at a level that we think you will never be NFL level at? Because if that's the case, we don't know if we should pick you up, especially not in the first round. That's just that's not happening. That's not happening. So all of these players, again, they're they're in consideration, which means that they've had good enough career so far, they or good enough or better career so far. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform next year. And again, who are the risers? Who are the fallers? Who skyrockets into here out of nowhere? And uh, I'd love to see all these guys stay in that contention to be first round draft picks because last year, that was tough. That was tough seeing uh, the ACC have you know, so few draft picks in the first round as a whole. But it seems, according to all the mock drafts, that we are going to see a lot more ACC guys going to first round next year. Thank you all all so very much for coming out, folks. Again, please tell me how you feel. Tell me if there's anybody who was missed, anybody who was overrated, underrated, all that good stuff. Come on with it. Come on with it. I welcome it. I want to hear it. Thank you all. And again, I appreciate it every single time. Till next time, folks. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.